Holy God! Jesse, how's it going, man? How's Easter? How's Texas? Have you been getting bullied online lately, or are you doing okay? It's the typical day with your boy Joey. Da da da. Danger. Uh, yeah. Um. Bullying has subsided, I believe that's the correct term. Um, feels good, but at the same time, I'm starting to feel like I'm not doing something right because we all know when you do something good, that's when the man tries to bring you down. You know, I, I recently watched, uh, I watched this motivational speaker, uh, more of a friend, kind of like an amateur guy, you know, he, he does it unsolicited. Whether if he asks for it or not, he just does it, you know, and if you listen, and sometimes he can pick you up, but... I watched this guy last Monday. He was doing a Motivational Monday talk, and a, a big, uh, big topic with that was not letting what other people say or think about you affect you. So, I immediately thought of my buddy Jesse Hobson. He's a little bit under six foot tall, and um, he's been getting a lot of a lot of guff for that um, online with other like 30 plus year old movie nerds, you know. They can be pretty brutal, kind of like a two-headed snake. Uh, for too long it starts eating itself, you know. They want to cancel everything. Next thing you know, they're going to fucking be complaining that the scary movies are too scary. Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly do not get it. There's a million other things to make fun of me for. I have gray, a gray gray beard like there's a million lord of the rings jokes you can make i am six foot tall whether you want me to be or not that's just the way i i've been six foot tall since junior high like i played post in 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 high school basketball i played against uh kendrick perkins beaumont ozen so like i was much shorter than him but i was still six foot tall Ooh, so it sucks to be in the same community with people like that um, which is really weird because speaking of the horror community, when we're actually out in the horror community doing shows and stuff, everyone seems awesome. So I think it's not even the active horror community. I think it is the weirdo computer people who are also fans of horror movies that seek into the horror movie online community. I think there needs to be more of a kind of separation, obviously, because there is a separation of personalities and people uh, from the in-person horror community to the online horror community. They are not the same people. Uh, and I've done a lot of footwork and research, you know, to, to personally establish that. And that's one thing I've noticed because in person, everyone's real fucking nice to me. So maybe that could be it too, Jesse. Maybe you're just attracting like the, the low hanging fruit Karens of our community. Uh, I notice a lot of them don't really interact much on your pages. Unless it's to complain about something or to try to start some drama. So that's really weird that they would use that much effort instead of just to fucking click in a like or a dislike or something on, on your thing or having anything of any actual substance to say rather than fuck this guy, cancel him, he disagreed with me, he hurt my feelings, he didn't use my pronouns before, and it goes on and on and on. Yeah, agreed, Robbie. Uh, that's something you will find with me if you do add me on Facebook, Instagram, into scams, whatever. Um, I'm always up for a conversation. And, and Robbie, you did mention uh, horror conventions. I, I recently just went to one in Houston, the horror pop up part three or whatever. Um, it was a badass event, and I had a fucking blast. But literally, no altercations. Um, you know, I'm. I'm walking around, people recognizing people. Uh, you know, these are people that I've wrote about, that I've um, done reviews on, and uh, literally had everything nice to say about each other uh, when face to face. But no issues at all. Great time, great people. Uh, you know, I look forward to conventions, and that was just another good one. Um, you know, behind me, I guess you could say. But you know, these keyboard warriors, dude. Like they, they. That's that's the only place they, they hang out, I guess. Let's get away from all that and go to a nice little magical world full of dyed eggs and pastel colors and rape and mutilation and torture and verbal abuse and... Oh, fuck. We're talking about the Bunny Man movies. 
There's like three of them. There's a trilogy now. Four if you count the uh, the Bunny Game, which these movies are kind of like an unauthorized, unapproved kind of like spinoff of. They're trying to like, they kind of keep with some of the continuity. I mean, there's a guy in a bunny suit killing people, but they're, these are way different. This director went way off the deep end. Uh, the first one is probably the closest to a, to a regular, like, normal film uh, out of the three, for sure. Yeah, these, these Bunny Men movies are like movies you see at the gas station and you're like, that could be interesting. And uh, you still pick beef jerky over these films. Uh, this one is probably the closest film out of the three to resemble an actual like movie. Um, it is what you think. It's a guy in a bunny suit killing people. It's not too bad. Uh, it's not too good. I give it a, I don't know why they made so many of them afterwards. Obviously people like the fucking subject matter. Um, Sit down. They are entertaining, but you know, at the end of the day, I would still rather slam into a Slim Jim um, just because they could have been, they, they, like, they could have been better. Obviously people must like the subject matter, so uh, I personally give the first one a 3.2. Uh, the second one is the Bunny Man Massacre that is on Amazon Prime. You can watch it right now tonight. Um, it's it's probably the best one out of the three as far as story and everything. The cinematography is pretty good. The acting is about as good as it's going to get for that sort of thing. Um, one of the lead like hillbilly guys, he, he, he grew on me. He was pretty good. Um, there's a ton of rape in these guys. Very rape, death, mutilation, cannibalism heavy. Um, you know, chainsaw little kids heads off. That's this one, the second one. It, it's pretty intense and it has some mind fuck moments in it. Um, like I said though, this one's easily, for me, the best one out of the three as far as a, a movie uh, goes. Like, although I found myself asking if I was gonna finish it or not, if it was worth it. Could I reverse it, take it back, drop it down, twerk it, all that kind of stuff. I wasn't sure. Um, so it leaves you with that weird feeling, but it is watchable. It is enjoyable. You gotta look away sometimes, listen to it sometimes, or you just fucking stare right at it. Get right on in there. However you want to do it. Um, it, was, it was okay. I give it a 4.8. The third installment of the series is kind of works as like a prequel for one moment and then brings you up to date with the future stuff, but then also touches on the present. So he kind of, you can tell he was, the director was just trying to shoot his load as far as he could on this third movie and cover all the bases. Um, in doing that, this third one is fucking bizarre. So, spoiler alert, I did not watch the third one. So I'm gonna give you my quick review of the first and second. Uh, the first one I watched was a, like a fucking, I don't even know what to call it, like a uh, grindhouse version, because that was the version that was available on Amazon. Um, it was really odd. There was a lot of really weird choices. Um, now, was it watchable? Yes, it was watchable. It just seemed really long um, for what it was. And I'm sure that a lot of that stuff was added for the grindhouse version because they would do like weird edits and weird cuts and, I mean, it's fun, 
as as much fun as it can be uh, you know based on this type of film um the second one you know it's funny because i watched the second one first not knowing that it was a sequel uh the second one is a about the same um there's some really weird choices uh there's a lot of walking um the or maybe that's the first one I, they kind of all mold together and that's why i didn't watch the third one because i just figured it was going to be more of the same and with one and two i ended up giving them one star out of five so that's two out of ten um, as far as robbie's movie ghetto scale goes uh, pretty bizarre too but this one is very very weird it starts following like like a regular movie the kids stuck out in the desert and stuff then all of a sudden there's a sequence about a three minute sequence where they're just walking in the desert thirsty and stuff and it goes right into overdubs with stock footage of 1920s new york or some shit going through it and they've got accents and they're saying, oh, we just walked into New York all of a sudden, 1920s. Really weird. I don't know if different actors doing the overdubs and the actors on screen, they even do really horrible accents and talk about it. It's really fucking weird. And it takes you out of the movie for like the seventh time within the first 30 minutes that you're taken out of the fucking movie and the storyline. Like I said, I think it was the director's way of trying to find a way to cheat it and, and get the movie out anyway, because obviously there's people lined up ready to see fucking part three. Um, other than that, it does all these really weird green screen sequences, like you're in Bunny Man's mind or something, or he's hallucinating. Those are kind of fun, kind of cartoony. This one's really weird though. I mean, it could not keep my fucking attention. It kept jumping around everywhere. I'm someone who's been watching movies for 30 plus years, you know. Um, even if they're bad, I usually finish them. I finished this, I made it through it, but like, I fucking kept thinking I was, I, I missed something. I'm like, how does this, any of this, it wasn't supposed to make sense. Uh, the third movie is definitely one of the shittiest shit shows I've ever shit it myself, so I give it like a 2.2. What do you think, Jesse? The Bunny Man fucking trilogy. What do you give it here on this beautiful Easter episode? of the movie Ghetto, featuring Cinnadome, Jesse Hobson. Don't bully, guys. It's funny how you say not to bully, and then I have to bully this this franchise. Um, I, I now, based on what you're saying, I want to see part three just because it sounds so ridiculous, but I probably won't because there's so many other better movies to watch. Um, I didn't... And the reason is, is because there's so many poor choices that went into the first two films. And then also to, uh, I didn't, I didn't like anybody. There was literally no redeeming, um, characters in this film. Even the bunny man himself, like when he takes off the mask and you know, you expect this huge reveal. It was very lackluster. Um, I wanted it to be so much better because it was so weird and you know I you know we, we sit through this film and or these films sadly and um, you know I wanted some sort of payoff because there was but there was none and that's probably why why I will never watch the third one and that's probably why I will never make my wife suffer through the through this trilogy or why I didn't make my wife suffer um, but yeah you will see this film at a gas station and again no matter how cool the cover art looks no matter how entertaining the back of the box sounds avoid talk about an overhyped letdown we've got two of them for you just gonna go for it we're gonna rip the band-aid off overhyped letdown Let's talk about fucking candy corn. Josh Hasty's candy corn. I was so pumped for this movie. I was ready for this movie. I was online telling people, fuck three from hell, candy corn's gonna steal the show. It's gonna be the movie with the superior fucking story, the superior cinematography. It's gonna look great. It had all this hype behind it, all these people endorsing it. Boom, finally show up, see the movie. 
And it's such a fucking underwhelming letdown. It's one of those movies that the artwork, the posters, stickers, the merchandise all looks and is way cooler than the actual movie. The actual movie is basically just Halloween. It's a dumbed down version of Halloween, but with the carnival setting instead of Halloween setting and a different mask. But almost verbatim, the kills are identical. Not to say that like someone just invented a kill and no one else could use it. No, like, like literally, the kills from Candy Corn are the kills from Halloween. Like, they're all off screen, like, they, they take the whole thing. Tony Todd's in it, but he's literally used for a couple minutes, and anyone could have been him. His character is totally forgettable. Pancho Moller's really good in it. He's probably the best part, but once again, the writing for him was kind of like, <clears throat> um, Courtney, whatever the fuck, that was in the burbs, he's cool. He's cool, but he could have literally been played by anyone. That This is a movie that could have been just like a regular-ass friend film or student film or won some festivals or something for, for looking good, because it did look good, and, you know, sounding good, things that are important. Um, I think it would have rocked, like, regionally. It would have rocked the shit and maybe gave him some momentum to do an actual, like, big film. This shouldn't have been the big film. Uh, for sure. So with that being said though, I look forward to seeing what comes from Josh Hasty in the future. And I would have probably liked Candy Corn a lot more if all the hipsters and fucking horror community people wasn't hyping it up so hardcore. It's like if you're in with them, then your shit's going to be a success no matter what. So speaking of another one like that, Satanic Panic, Chelsea's Stardust or Fart Dust or whatever her name is, Cool Girl, whatever, Sweetheart, uh, the movie sucks. The movie fucking sucked. And it had Jeff Daniel Phillips in it. And like, the rest of the cast was great too. They were all good actors. It was a very unoriginal story. The fucking effects were great, but you barely see them. Like, it was just completely forgettable. And I really, really am getting sick of people underutilizing Jeff Daniel Phillips' talent. Whether it's his management or who. But the guy is a really good actor. And I feel like 99% of the time and 99% of the films we've seen him in, they have not utilized that one bit. He could easily be the lead character, the supporting character, all these things. He's a very good, very diverse actor. They always stick him as fucking like rapist number two or like post office worker guy in the background or angry tow truck guy. Like, like he's never in the movies for more than a couple minutes, and if he is, they make him a total forgettable, like, <laughs> character. And he could have easily been the lead in Satanic Panic, and it would have made the film just boom, three, four notches. I was tricked as well. Um, I really wanted to like this movie more. Uh, it, it definitely had a very cool Halloween-esque vibe. But um, I think ultimately it just kind of fell short. The, the lore that they were presenting wasn't as strong as they thought they had. I'm a, I was a big fan of what I saw going into this film. Unfortunately, I was not as pleased as I, as I should have been. Um, I'm a big fan of these like movies that happen around Halloween or kind of add a lore to Halloween and um, like uh, the Barn. Uh, the Barn is a really good indie film and you know that's kind of what I was expecting from this film. Candy Corn is entertaining but it's not it's not as good as The Barn and it's not it's it, sh it should have been better. Uh, I will say the film is very polished. Um, it looks good. Um, obviously the team behind it knew what they were doing but you know at the end of the day, it's 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 a uh, it's it is kind of it's kind of boring. Um, I gave it three out of ten. I, I wish it was higher because I had been anticipating this film for a long time. I saw the the stickers, you know, at uh, Texas Frightmare for for years. I saw it on Indiegogo. You know, I was following this guy uh, very closely, and when I got the screener. Um, I really, I really wanted, I, I think I tricked myself initially into thinking that I liked it. And then the more that I looked back on it, the less I liked it. Um, again, it's, it's fun. Like it kind of, kind of puts you in the mood for Halloween, but I mean, really in all reality, it just kind of gets you ready to watch a good movie. Um, and then that movie, you know, 
is seems that much better because this one is is not as complete as it should be. So candy corn, I give a three point two. Satanic panic, I give a two point eight. We're hitting some low shit today, guys, for being Easter. Jesse, what did you think about candy corn? Did it get hyped up big to you guys in Texas too? And I know Satanic Panic, you're friends with a bunch of SJWs and Fangoria people and stuff. Like, that was heavily endorsed by Fangoria. to be fucking this awesome movie and a girl director and feminist power and all this stuff. What do you think of Satanic Panic? Because all that shit aside, I go into all these movies not, not knowing and not giving a fuck about any of the background stuff. I care about the story, the movie, the effects. Boom. Come on. Dazzle me, baby. You know what I mean? Um, what did you think, man? What did you think of Satanic Panic and Candy Corn? Were they as big of a letdown for you, for your friends, for your, your group? Like, what did everyone think? So, at the end of the day, Candy Corn is a good film to watch if you are watching a couple Halloween films. Um, it'll probably be the weakest of the batch. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are affiliated with Satanic Panic. I, I I think a lot of people, even even people involved directly with the film, were disappointed uh, because a lot of things didn't work on set, uh, and then I think they just kind of ran out of time, money, uh, people were tired. There was a lot of weirdness on set too. I'm assuming uh, that's I don't know, but yeah, I think ultimately these this is just a lot a big batch of disappointing films. Two movies that I really wanted to like that I that, that there are movies that are similar to both of these films, but those other films did did it better. They did it much better than these two. Um, I can't think of the movie. I think it's like we, what's it called? Let's see. Okay, so uh, Satanic Panic, there's another film that's kind of similar to it called We Summon the Darkness. Why It has Johnny Knoxville in it. While We Summon the Darkness is also not that great, it is much better than Satanic Panic. I feel like it's the movie that Satanic Panic wanted to be. And then kind of the same thing I mentioned earlier with um, Candy Corn, that movie really wanted to be The Barn. It wanted to add some, like, its own spin on Halloween, its own lore. It wanted to put a stamp on the holiday and kind of make it a, uh, you know, a, one of those films we, we look to every year, you know, around uh, the spooky season. Um, yeah, and then also we have <laughs> we have the, the, the Bunny Bunny Man trilogy, which I have no fucking idea why Robbie even suggested those. Um, you know, they are what they are. They are definitely heavily inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but that's that's really all they are is just three kind of cheap ripoffs of um, you know a classic uh, classic series, uh, but that's really it, you know. So uh, yeah, happy Easter, F Robbie. What are we doing? Now here's a movie that I thought was gonna be really really hard to watch. I wasn't sure if it was even the type of film that I needed to see to do that to myself. I watched the trailer and there was interest, but it made me feel like, am I going to turn this thing off or what? Uh, and it turned out to be a pleasant surprise. It's on Amazon Prime right now. It's called Butt Boy. Butt, like your butt, boy. So this movie is crazy. I mean, the first act, it gets your interest, and it, it's almost like a horror movie. It gets dark, and you're almost thinking, I don't know, I don't want to go there. I don't want to see this kind of dark. Give me a, give me a fucking, I don't want to see this kind of dark. You know, so the first act, it gets pretty dark. It's not exactly a horror movie, but you're sitting there thinking, oh, this is going to get dark. I don't know if, uh, if I want to see it get this dark. You know, I like horror movies, but like, give me a monster or a killer or something. And, uh, and then the second act, you're there and you're thinking, okay, that's pretty clever.
Then the second act, you know, you're in there watching it. Then the second act, you know, you're in there watching it and you're thinking, okay, well, this is kind of a clever way to do it. All right, all right, but it's still all pretty thick, the suspense and the, you got this feeling in your stomach, like you're like, oh man, this might make me want to puke. And then the third act is probably my favorite because it is bananas. This guy, whoever directed this, the director is wild, man. He's wild. He or she is wild. Uh, the third act is my favorite. It just is so imaginative and I enjoyed it thoroughly. I enjoyed it more than I thought I was gonna. And uh, I recommend it to people. I don't know how many times I've watched it again, but I recommend it to people. A, to see the look on their face when I tell them the title, and uh, B, to talk to them afterwards and find out how much they actually ended up enjoying it. So uh, I heard that you like stuff up here. I mean, uh, I heard that you thought this movie was pretty cool too, Jesse. Why don't you bend over and tell us about it? I'm gonna rate it, by the way, before he gets in here and steps all over me. I'm gonna go ahead and rate, rate, lap, 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 Move me, baby. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this an easy peasy smooth but bootylicious 7.2. That's fucking big. That's big on the movie ghetto. And that's what you're watching. It's the movie ghetto. Jesse! Tell me something, baby. Thrill me. Jesse, thrill me. Before we move forward, elephant in the room, the same shirt, different day. Um, so we're talking about butt boy. Did, did I catch a pun? Did you say butt nanas? Um, this movie killed it and knocked it out of the park. Uh, the trailer is edited fantastically. Um, I will say that I did not expect it to be. It's, it's deceptively good. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. Fantastic. Uh, it was amazing to see what they did with the budget. Um, they did a lot with a little. And um, I mean, I want to say that it shows, but I can't think of another movie outside of maybe a, a handful that accomplished what they did with this film with such a a uh, shoestring budget so um if at the very least this film has that going for it i feel like it could be taught in film class because of which uh fantastic uh use of resources uh, fantastic storytelling um great acting and uh, from what i've heard this uh originally started out as a kind of a, a joke um, amongst friends and then slowly but surely became um this feature film that we got titled butt boy i think the title um gets you gets your interest and then from that point they just kind of take it and run with it so at the very least um if butt boy didn't save the day it it, it did save this show so we did get a uh, this is a the probably one of the shittier episodes no pun intended of uh the movie get oh but Butt Boy is here, and Butt Boy is up there as far as ratings. Again, with uh, looks like sevens from both of us, or <clears throat> seven and or higher from both your boy, uh, Jesse and Robbie. So tune in next week. Uh, maybe by then I'll have a, uh, a new... Uh, new facial hair, new a new shirt. Who knows? You never know here at the movie ghetto. See you then. Bye. sure to check out other cool new episodes where we cover movies like Carnage, The Legend of Quilt Face, Cannibal Cop, Nightmare Cinema, Totally Fucked Up, Nowhere, This World and the Fireworks, Child Eater, Doom Generation, and Primal Rage.